forgive me for this crazy mask. I mean, you know, but uh, I guess I got to wear it the next couple of days. But, uh, you know, I know that everyone knows this. And COVID can be, it was crazy before. You know, I guess the variants now, from what all the experts are telling me, are even more concerning than that they're very, very, very infectious. My gosh, I probably, I really probably had this. Well, you know, let me give you a little history real quick. First of all, Jill, my daughter, and her husband, and her eldest, oldest kid, you know, JC, second oldest, Conley, all ended up with it. Now, and her babysitter. And so with all that being said, I started getting tested, and I was tested with Kathy every day for like five days, all through the build-up to the state of the state. And then I got this little cold, you know, and I thought, well, okay, and everything. So they gave me some antibiotics and everything, and I didn't even think anything of how I was feeling probably, probably uh, a week ago last Friday and Saturday, I felt just tired and everything. And then it's Sunday, you know, more of that. And then I came down here on Monday and more of that. And then Tuesday, and then all of a sudden, I thought, my gosh, you know, I feel bad. And so then I, you know, I guess I missed a window there that I could have got tested, but probably I had this beginning maybe Friday after the state of the state. So we were kind of jammed in on the state of the state, like you are now. So good luck to you. <laughs> I hope that we don't lose several of you. But, uh, but nevertheless, uh, be a little careful because, you know, uh, it's still highly contagious stuff. And, and I have to rely on Dr. Marsh, and he's been a superstar beyond belief. And so I do appreciate you coming, you know. There's lots going on, and you're seeing all that. You know, baby, what is going on with you? My gosh, don't tell me you're bleeding. Hold still, what's going on? Well, I don't know. I'll check that out later. Uh, okay. I thought really it'd be good to bring baby dog from the standpoint that, you know, when it's over, maybe y'all can come up and see baby dog, and then I can get out of this, you know. But... <laughs> But, uh, but nevertheless, uh, again, I thank you. There's lots of stuff going on within the legislature. It's important stuff. You know, I want to clarify a couple things. Really simple stuff is just this. You know, <clears throat> so if you ask me about it and you can ask anything when we're done here, I'll be real quick. But, you know, as far as a couple things, whether it be the, you know, how we're going to treat DHHR, you know, what are we going to do? You know, you know, from my standpoint, I've tried to do two or three things. I've tried to bring in the best experts that I know we can possibly have, and that's Dr. Marsh and General Hoyer and on and on. And, uh, and we had a McChrystal report. Now, with all that being said, do I really care, you know, about, about you know, the fact from the standpoint, I, I don't know how to work, but I do believe that the Senate and the House, that people are trying to make it better. People aren't just hitting at stuff, I don't think. But if they do, well, I'm telling you, hit at me. Don't hit at our people. I can always take that. The thing that I won't tolerate and I won't take is hitting at our people. From a standpoint of same kind of deal, you know, the Governor Powers deal and everything. Well. First of all, let me be really as blunt as I can be. Thank God we had the governor's powers and the ability to move when we really had to move. Because this pandemic stuff could have been really tough. It was plenty tough enough. But we did make the right decisions and we did push, push the right buttons and Lord have mercy thinks about how we've tried to 
preserve and looked after our counties and everything with the CARES money, and all of a sudden it all worked, did it not? It just worked. Now, and so, thank God we had that mechanisms, those mechanisms in place at that time. Now, it's hard to tell what, what will happen in the future, but sure to goodness you've got to bet on the fact that we're not going to have another mega pandemic crisis on my watch. But from the standpoint of other governors, we've got to watch what we do because a governor really has to move. That's all there is to it. But again, and I want to be really clear on this, from my standpoint, I don't care. I mean, whether it be a shot at me or it be trying to make things better, on a national scene, you know, you had some governors with all these powers and all this kind of stuff, and it got carried away. Again, let's stay really positive that people are trying, whether it be the House or the Senate, trying to make things better. And from Jim's standpoint, if it's not that and it's a shot at me, who cares? I mean, who cares? Be really fair. Who cares? You know, I can take that. I'm a great big boy. <laughs> I weigh too big. But, but I can take every single bit of that. The one thing, though, that I can't take is I can't take hurting our people. And today, and this is what we should talk about more than anything, you're here to celebrate Tourism Day. You're here because of ungodly amount of goodness that we've got going on across this state right now. And you are so responsible for it in so many ways. And I congratulate you up teen million times. I've told people over and over and over and over. You can't put too much money in tourism. And the other thing about this is, and stay with me on this and really pay really close attention to what I'm saying. We started this tourism movement. And then when we started the tourism movement, all of a sudden we saw all kinds of things start happening. We saw you know, publications saying West Virginia was a great place to come to. My Lord of living, we would have never, ever thought that. We saw our parks get better and all kinds of things that we did along the way with surplus dollars and whatever. And before you know it, we're the star of the game show. Now, but just stay with me and then I won't say anything else right this second about tourism unless you ask something. Absolutely, we are still, and this is the great part about this, we're still just going around and getting the parsley around the sides of the plate. There's so much more that's available to us in tourism, it's unbelievable. We haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes yet. There is so much more good to come to this state. I mean, we got to keep going because absolutely you do phenomenal work. And I don't know who all's here and everything, but I know there's got to be some tourism people here. You know, now, let me go back to just this. We have an opportunity, and this is where, now this, this would really get me fired up. We have an opportunity here to really help our people. I proposed, you know, no, and this is, a lot of you are way too young for this, but a long time ago, you know, if you had a, a decent vehicle, pickup truck, or maybe not a decent vehicle, you know, but but a lot of people put mud flaps on, and then if they went squirrel hunting, they put squirrel tails on the antenna of the vehicle. Now, this is a plan that does not have mud flaps or squirrel tails. It just says, absolutely, we're going to cut your taxes by 50%. We have the ability to do that. You've got the experts right here that have, done, have gone on and on and on. To me, to me, we move. We're two-thirds of the way home, aren't we? You know, and from the Senate side, the Senate is asking questions and mulling over, and we tried. We tried to move toward their side because they wanted to go big, big splash in the pond, 50%. We did it. And I am very, very hopeful, and I'm going to stay extremely positive 
and say, you know, they're continuing to, to work and do good stuff. Let's don't drift into bad thoughts. Let's stay positive, good stuff and everything with everybody and say everybody's trying as hard as they can for us to get there. But at the end of the day, and I always call the voters Toby and Edith, but Toby and Edith are dependent on us right now, right now. Literally, you talk about something that will explode the growth in this state, bring people here. God bless a milk cow. We've got to have workers. Workers. What do you think that this would do as an incentive package? Just the incentive package of putting a billion dollars right back in your hands or a little more. A billion dollars. What are you going to do? You're going to spend it. The multiplier effect of those dollars is going to go zoo, 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 zoo. It's the greatest incentive package in the world, and everybody else has proven that. The other states over and over and over have proven just that. Look at all the publications. Look at the states that are growing. All you got to do is look. And absolutely, with all in us, look at where we're located. All the people that are going to Tennessee or Florida or Texas or maybe even Georgia or South Carolina is on their way. And they, they've got to drive through us to get to them. And if you're driving in the summer and you're getting to them, you're going to be on fire when you get there because they're frying eggs on the sidewalk. Literally, we're not doing that in West Virginia, are we? Four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet. Absolutely, without any question, not too severe, just great. We have four seasons here. I mean, think about South Dakota. They're another state. Think about Wyoming. They're another state. Think about Nevada. They're another state. Who in the world wants to go to South Dakota? Now, I mean, I'm, I don't, I shouldn't have said that. But do you realize how cold it got here, you know, two or three weeks ago? Do you realize how cold that was? I mean, do you, do you have any idea what it was like in Wyoming at that time? I mean, honestly, if you want to be a Wyoming sickle, I mean, you could go to Wyoming in the middle of the winter, you know. But that's not us. And the other thing is, Think how close to the population. Everybody's got to come through us. What an opportunity. And literally, I give the credit to you. At the end of the day, you put us in this position. You know, I've tried to rudder the boat and everything. But look at the surpluses and look what you're doing. You've put us in this position. Now, we've got to stay real positive and hope, hope like crazy the Senate's going to get us the other third of the way there. And then we're going to go on down the road. We're going to celebrate all kinds of goodness that's going to happen to this great state. But without any question whatsoever, today you got a 95 to 2, 95 to 2 vote in the House. The House is already doing phenomenal work and everything. I see our majority leader back there, you know, Eric Householder and everything. And, and, and Leader Householder has been involved in cutting the personal income tax for 73 years now. He's really old, but, but not, I'm just giving him a hard time, you know. But he's been at this a long time, and he believes. He believes, as I do. And so I really thank the House, and I want to be super positive that we're going to celebrate with the Senate, and everybody's going to run across the finish line. Now, <clears throat> there's nothing. Now, we say what we want, but there's nothing. Nothing that even minutely compares in the smallest way to how important this is. So, I'm here. I'm not here to, I'm not here to criticize. I'm not here to bash. I'm not going to do that whatsoever. You know, but surely at least now. You know, from the standpoint we really don't have a counter or whatever like that from the Senate side and everything, but we're really hopeful we're going to get there. Can you imagine, I mean, just think just for a second. 
Can you imagine that uh, we awakened in West Virginia to a situation to where, you know, we had a 50% reduction in our income tax? And then can you imagine just a few years, maybe even less, that we could get to a situation to where we could eliminate our income tax? Can you imagine being able to do that and still being able to do all the good that we're doing? And you may think to yourself just this, and this is the very thing that you need to really get a grip on. Think about this. When Jim Justice, like it or not like it, walked in this door, I don't care what anybody says, I mean, I'm plenty smart, smart enough as a business guy to be able to evaluate something, and we were dead bankrupt. I don't care how you cut it. Dead, flat, bankrupt. Now, we have, through the combination of all of us pulling the rope together, we've gotten to where we are today. Now, why in the world would anybody on this planet be dumb enough to believe that Jim Justice would risk that? I mean, why in the world would anybody think that Jim Justice, the business guy, the business guy that looked at this bankruptcy and drove the boat in every way he could to a situation that we are in today, how on the planet could you possibly think that I want to leave with, all, with us upside down? Absolutely risk stuff. You know, there's no way. There's no possible way. If the numbers are even close, there's no way. You know, absolutely, that's what these people are all about. That's what we've done, honestly. You know, leader, householder, and, and us, we met, and we, we talked and everything. You know, the speaker and <clears throat> all the folks, you know, the finance chair and everybody, you know, the deputy speaker and everybody, we met, and we talked and we talked and we talked and talked. And literally, <clears throat> at the end of the day, then... We were really close to having maybe something that was like a proposal. That was in around Thanksgiving. And from Thanksgiving all the way up until probably the state of the state, these people worked day, 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 day. Not a few hours or a few minutes. Day after day after day on what what could be the fallacies? Where's the hole we're missing? What's the problem and everything? To make sure, to make sure, absolutely we were on rock solid ground. Now, so nevertheless, we're here and we're, and, and, and you know, I think it's really, really important that I continue to try to answer your questions as best I can, try to answer your concerns, Talk about other things. If you want to talk about tourism, whatever you want to talk about, I'm, I'm tickled to death to do that. If you want to, if you want to talk two more minutes and, and, and leave, I'm okay with that. But let me tell you, there's no question in my mind, no matter what any of you do, there's nothing more important in this moment right now. Nothing that can compare to it. This moment is our moment. This moment is our moment to put that stake in the sand and say, by God, we're West Virginia. This moment is for Toby and Edith that literally, absolutely are out there battling inflation right now, but Toby and Edith went through a time in their life for decades and decades and decades when West Virginia couldn't do anything. I mean nothing. And they suffered through it with all of us pulling the rope, and Toby and Edith, we owe. We owe them. We owe them. For God's sakes of living, now's our time. So ask me anything you want to ask. Governor, you seem to be taking a more diplomatic approach here with the Senate. Uh, we obviously had heard... And Several of us have written about the uh, Senate uh, Finance Committee meeting that Secretary Hardy was part of, where you were, you sort of got pretty, pretty well grilled uh, by the, the Republicans on that committee, and still a lot of uh, kind of bitterness at how uh, things came together with Amendment Two, uh, and obviously traveling the state, calling them the swamp, saying they're in the interests of corporate interests and things of that nature. 
but you're trying to take a more diplomatic approach going forward. That's pretty clear from, from your tone. So uh, you've talked about your conversations with the House leading up to this. I know that you did meet with Senate Republican leaders at the beginning of the session. Have there been any other conversations, either between you or your staff, uh, with Republicans? It doesn't even have to be leadership. You can be talking to any Republican that's over at this point. What conversations are you having to get this over the finish line in the Senate? Well, first of all, you know, Rob, you got to go back in my office and get that little can of orange stuff that's sitting on my thing. Okay, okay. Second, second. Let me say this. We've we've met. We continue to to stand with open arms to meet. Uh, we did that before, you know, but. But Stephen, I mean, we did it. I mean, remember, I came out with a plan that was just basically a kind of a rubber stamp on on dealing with inflation and five dollar gasoline. You know, when I said, well, let's just do for right now until we get to the session and everything. Let's just do a stopgap thing and do a ten percent reduction in income tax. And Lord of mercy, it was just like. The, the brakes got hit all over the place and everything shut down. And I thought, well, what in the world is going on? Because you see, at that point in time, then I had to do a bunch of digging. Now, the things that we absolutely don't need to, to just get down in the weeds on and everything else, but, but we're still retrading Amendment 2, you know, and, and we can't get over the fact that you know, now sure, I went out and voiced my opinion and, and talked to the people and everything else, but everything I told the people was surely right. You know, I told the people that Amendment 2 wasn't about just your car tax. Amendment 2 was about changing the Constitution. Well, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when people started learning that Amendment 2 was about way more than just your car tax, then all of a sudden the people started getting really concerned because the people wanted to keep their control in their counties and that kind of stuff. And literally at the end of the day, then like it or not like it, but all of a sudden the vote changed from 85-15 pass to 65-35 no way. Now, I can only vote one time. And, and literally, at the end of the day, if we, if we say, well, yeah, but the, the people, justice didn't tell the people exactly right. Now, d listen, let me tell you something. Toby and Edith always get it right once they're told the facts. And, we, and, and I'm not going to look at Toby and Edith and say, y'all didn't absolutely, y'all voted away because, and, and you, did, you weren't, sharp enough or whatever it may be to really dig into it and understand what you were doing, no way. Toby and Edith got it right. Now, we know all we need to do is listen to Toby and Edith and move on. We don't need to be stuck in the mud. That's why you don't hear me criticizing anything. I would have said, I would have said to everybody, I've, I said it, and I would have done exact, exactly this. If that election would have come out dead the other way, and I had all the power in the world, I would have said, the voters spoke. That's all there is to it. And that's what we would have done. We'd have moved forward. I'd have still tried just as hard as I could possibly try all the time for the people of West Virginia. The voters spoke. Move forward. You know, now. But where we are today, there's no point in being critical of anybody. We need to do just that. Move forward. You know, be honorable, gentlemen, ladies, move forward. That's all we need to do. You know, and so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cast stones. Yes, sir. Governor, uh, you know, I guess I said the distinction of both the diagnosis with COVID-19 and say I'm well to go fine. But I wanted to ask you, um, I suspect the state of the state, but anyway. Uh, speech was fine, but I think we're all a few votes for us. I'm not asking you to negotiate public here, but is there a number you might be able to come to 
uh, in a compromise with the Senate, maybe doing 30% over three years, or doing the full 50% but spreading it out over five years? Is there a number in there where the two sides might meet? Because right now it sounds like they're entrenched and they're not budget. They're entrenched in what did you say? And they're not budging. Not budging. Well, you know, Mark, here's the thing. You know, I'm a real believer. There's no point in being in an auction, being in an auction by yourself. You know, I mean, you know, I can go to an auction and bid on that car and bid a thousand, and then nobody say anything and say two thousand, and then nobody say anything and say four thousand. You know, who knows? Who knows? You know, all I'd say is. What we need to do is understand that from Jim Justice's standpoint, from Secretary Hardy's standpoint, from all of our standpoints, we have vetted these numbers forever. I'm wanting to give you a 50% tax cut right now, right this minute. 50% right now, you know, and we can, we can phase it 30, 10, 10, or maybe we could change how we phase it but 50% right now, that's what I'm with. No bells and whistles, no squirrel tails and mud flaps, 50% right now. That's what I'm wanting to do. And, and, and you know, and I want to be really positive. I am super thankful that the, the, the House gave us a 95 to 2 vote, and we're two-thirds of the way home. We need to give Toby and Edith a 50% tax cut in every single last one of y'all. And then that's what needs to happen. Now, you know, at some point in time, if, if, if they come back with something, then we evaluate. But, but there's, it's way premature to, to evaluate something when we have no idea what they would come back with or what they're coming back with. Ask me something if you choose to do so. Yes, ma'am. Dave, did you under, did you, could you hear? I think, I think I understood the question. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. Sure. So, um, obviously, in cutting our taxes, which is fantastic, um, that's going to be taking money away from a certain budget. How do we replenish that? Like, how do you replenish that budget for whatever it's being spent for now? Okay. Uh, the, the answer to the question is very simply, we don't, we don't have to cut the budget at all to implement the governor's tax plan. Our revenues have gone up so dramatically. Uh, this year alone, they went up 21.2%, and they're continuing to grow at, at uh, unprecedented historic rates. Our severance tax is up 113%. Our personal income tax is up. Our consumer sales tax, all of our big revenue streams are setting records. So you have a, a historic moment here. There's $1.7 billion extra money in this year's budget, fiscal year 23. That the, our proposal is not to raise the state's base budget. It's just to let the state's base budget continue to grow as it has been since the governor has been in office at basically the rate of inflation, pay raises, extra expenses that come. But the revenue streams are so high that our proposal is we're reducing the revenue stream. And that's the beauty of the proposal. We are not cutting the base budget at all. The other plans that have been out there have involved raising the base budget, which means in the future, if your revenue starts to go down, your revenues are going to get below your base budget very quickly. Much more dangerous. This is taking the dollars that are excessive, billions of dollars, and putting them right back into everyone's pocket. In, uh, by by uh, the end of fiscal year 24, the upcoming fiscal year, we will return about $1.1 billion to the people of West Virginia. And that will have an effect. That, those dollars will be spent, and they will multiply. And we haven't even factored that in. Now, that's really important to say. I wouldn't allow them to factor that in. 
I would not allow them to factor in, well, we're going to factor in some level of growth. I wouldn't let them do it. The reason I wouldn't let them do it is because we just need that as gravy right on top. We cannot get ourselves in any level of risk, and that's why, in, in addition to all that, remember this now, we put, the, what is the rainy day fund? Think about the rainy day fund. The rainy day fund right now is probably $670 million or, 600, or $970 million or $950 million. We put $700 more million in a fund, a bucket, and call it a PIT, or personal income tax bucket, insurance policy. We took that out of, the, out of the surplus dollars and put it over there to have no matter what. Just to have in case of an emergency, we don't think we'll ever touch it. But just in case, that's what we've done. So we're solid ground. Yes, sir. The one concern I do hear going forward, I know you've heard this as well, is, and I know you said you've vetted the numbers, but of course it allows for, I think, your assumptions, a flat budget going forward with give or take about 3% growth, uh, and you all are able to show that uh, the, the surpluses, or whatever you want to call them, continue uh, till fiscal year 2027 once, uh, if you can keep that happening. But the question is, you know, especially with some of the things that we are seeing, PIA, obviously both one of them, I know you guys have a short-term plan to deal with that this session, but that's going to be an issue going forward. How do you account for future legislatures and the challenges they're going to be dealing with, particularly with things like PEIA, uh, eating into the base budget and increasing that, probably beyond that 3% growth that you asked You want to answer? Sure. Yeah. The if you look back at the historic trends over the last six years, because we're at sort of a blip right now with inflation, and inflation is starting to come down. It peaked in June of 22, and it's come down in November of 22 by over 1.5 percent, and we don't have December yet. So we think the inflation is going to slow down. But if you look back over the last five, six years, and you look at where the governor started with the base budget, which I think was about 4225 and where we are right now, 4686, you'll see that the base budget has consistently, if you look over those six years, grown by a very modest amount. And uh, this legislature and certainly this governor, and this is a compliment to everybody, not just the governor, because the governor proposes exactly. the budget, the legislature approves it. The legislature has been committed, along with the governor, of keeping that base budget under control. And you're right, our modeling assumes and reasonably so, that the base budget is going to remain 3 to 4 percent growth rate. That is part of our modeling, and we think that's a reasonable assumption. Keep in mind this. Now, you know, please, somebody just, just stay with me just on this. Every last one of us has a household, and every last one of us has income coming into our household. And at some point in time along the way, you know, if you look at your expenses and look at your income and all that kind of stuff, you just you make a decision that you can afford to buy a little bit better car or whatever it may be, and you do that with wisdom. You know. Now, on the other hand, if you have if you have a bank account and it's it's gone up and you have a slug of money sitting right there, I'd bet my life on this. If you leave that slug of money just sitting there forever, you'll spend it. And in most situations, you'll throw it away, and it'll be gone. It'll just be flat gone. I really am a personal believer in just this, is if you can mind a store and take care of the government and not be crazy and not be wasteful, and that's what we're saying about don't build base and everything just unnecessarily, mind a store. Now, you can say a lot of things you can say about me, and I'll, I'll, I'll agree or disagree with you, but give me, at least give me this. From the day I've walked in here, I've took care of the store. I mean, through all the COVID stuff and the CARES money, I took care of the store. Because at the end of the day, I would say it 10,000 million times. If your governor keeps the economics right, everything else is going to fall in place. If the economics are upside down, we can't do doodly. We just can't. Now, and so at the end of the day, 
mind the store. Look after the store. The other thing is, if you just go frivolously spending money, let's just say we said, well, we don't want it. We don't want to cut the taxes on our people. They don't deserve that. We don't want to give pay raises. We don't want to do things. Tell you what let's do. Here's what let's do. Let's build a little league field on every street corner all across the state. We can do that. We can do that with this money. Now, I love little leagues, don't get me wrong, but you're going to awaken to the fact that your money's gone. The money's gone. Let's just absolutely do the smart things that really mind the store and really perpetuate us. Give us the chance to really, really go. It's the taxpayers' dollars. It's not our dollars. It's the it's your money. For God's sake to live and give the money. You've always made the right decisions. Give the money to you. And then just see what happens to us. And do it in a way to where we know we're really safe. As safe as we can possibly know and possibly be. You know, now, at the end of the day, there may be a meteorite that hits us in the next 35 seconds. But if you're going to worry about that, then we need to just all go home and be with our families. You know, we need to quit doing things. Let's just go home and be with our families. You know, but at the end of the day, really and truly, I, I, I believe with all my soul, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to be a party to something that we, where we get the numbers out of kilter. Doing it 30, 10, 10 is just as much as I can possibly be to be aggressive and go up and put your toe in the water and not just cannonball right in. That's my thoughts. Listen, I'll end by just saying this. I don't know what is going on with baby doll, but I, <laughs> I'll end by just telling you just, uh, just what I've told you a thousand times. You always seem to get it right. Toby and Edith a lot of times are criticized and said, well, they're either poor or not that smart or not that educated or whatever, but just think about it. And, you know, and, and I'm going to get in trouble here, and I shouldn't probably go here, but, but just think about just this. Toby and Edith got the vote right as to what the vote should be nationally, in my opinion. I don't, I don't, I don't want to cast stones, but I really think that, that the Biden administration and what's going on there is not where we should be going. I think that, that there's too many mistakes, and, and good heavens to Betsy, I, I can't stand what's going on at the border, or I can't stand what's going on with inflation, or what's going on, you know, with the energy stuff and everything. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just plain doesn't make any sense. I think Toby and Edith basically are voting in this state because they're voting really against D.C. And, and, and in addition to that, I think Toby and Edith, if you'll really be fair, split the bullseye on Amendment 2 and told us what to do. I think Toby and Edith are brilliant. And they get it right. They absolutely get it right. Now, it's our time to step up for Toby and Edith. And then that's what I'm trying to do. No mud, ta uh, no mud flaps or squirrel tails. Just step up for Toby and Edith. Do the right thing. Cut the taxes. That's all there is to it. Thank you all so much for coming. And uh, I hope to goodness whether what we'll do is we'll get, we'll get the other third of the way home. We want to stay real positive. Let's, let's just do one thing, please, to God above. Let's quit absolutely just, you know, throwing mud at each other for the sake of throwing mud at each other. It's high time. This is our moment in West Virginia, and we don't need to screw it up. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all. Thank you all. Hey, Dave.